Hey guys, finally tennis, says Terry on the chat, and that's definitely the sentiment with which are, we are entering this match. This is the first match we are going to see in the ATP 2024 season. Yes, I know it is 29, the 29th of December, probably for some of you it's actually still the 28th, but um, yeah, the tennis world works differently and this is the first match of the 2024 ATP season. Today of course we get just two ATP, sorry United Cup, I'm still you know second edition and I'm still not used to it but the United Cup uh, we started today with two matches which is Spain and Brazil and then um, Great Britain against Australia. Spain, Brazil take the day session or however you want to call it in Perf. So Alejandro Davidovich Fokina, Thiago Sable Bild. Crazy matchup because they actually have played once. It was in 2020 in Rio and it was a match where they almost fought with each other, like literally fought. You know, they, the fists were clenched and basically the umpire had to sort of stop them from going at each other even harder. Um, Davidovich Fokina had three match points consecutively as well in the second set. He served, I think, with an underarm serve on one of them. He lost the match. He lost the match after three hours and 15 minutes of battle. Thiago Sablefield won his maiden ATP Tour title the week after that. It wasn't in Rio. It was in Santiago. Of course, it kind of took him a while to repeat that success. Well, he actually still hasn't repeated it, but, you know, to, let's say, be more consistent at the top level. And uh, now we have him in the top 100, and it's going to be really exciting to see what uh, sort of results he gets this year. Um, of course, the format has changed for the United Cup, so it's just the number one players that matter right now, but we still see a lot of reserves here. Um, right now, we had the Meligeni Alves siblings watching Thiago Sebovit in, in, in his United Cup debut. And uh, yeah, after that, it's going to be 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 Beatrice Hadotmaya against Sara Stormo. Also a matchup that's known for long matches, right? So similarly to... Davidovich Fokina Save of Bild, they have had an almost four hour match, um, four hour long match in the past. That was, of course, Ron Garros this year. We'll see if we get a repeat of that. I would act I, I actually hope that it's not going to be like this in the men's match because I got to go to bed after it. Uh, <laughs> but well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stay here, of course, for the duration of it, whichever, you know, whichever hour it will end at and what, however long the match will be. Um, when it comes to the favorite of this one, obviously it's Alejandro Davidovich Fokina, the sort of more established player, the better hardcourt player. However, I, I do feel that Thiago Sebovic should be better in hardcourts than what he's doing right now. He won the US Open in the juniors, then in the pros kind of hasn't had a single good run, really. But it seems like the results that he has been putting in on hardcourts, especially in 2022, this is 2023, where I think he went three and seven, something along these lines, maybe three and six. I think he is better than that. So I'm excited to see if he actually manages to trouble Davidovich Fokina here. Hey guys. Um... Yeah, we won't have a stream of the match even, sorry, if that was what you were expecting. We, of course, we cannot show that due to legal reasons. It is, well, the match is live, but we're not going to be showing the link because that's impossible. First point of the match when we already have a questionable call where Alejandro Davidovich Fokina is trying to argue that the save of the first serve was out, but, well... I think he has made this point, it seems. Well, I don't know what's happening already. Mohamed Layani is telling that we're talking not to look at the screen. So I guess we'll have a challenge there. But will I have it on my feed? Will it be shown? Some technical difficulties already. So we have a slight delay. I, um, Layani is talking on his walkie-talkie. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, the players are waiting, the crowd is waiting, although, as Ghosty is saying, apparently there's no one on the on one of the sides of the halves of the stadium. But, um, yeah, everyone is waiting for this challenge to happen, and it's just not 
taking place. Yeah, they, they can't show it. Lyani has just announced, so the original call stands. I kind of have to side with Davidovich Fokina here. Um, the serve seemed like a half a meter out to me, but uh, well, we're never going to know that, know that now, I guess. I'm going to quickly rewind and see if it was really that long or not. Yeah, I do think it. I, I do think it was long. And Davidovich Fokina is trying to argue it as well, but of course, there's nothing that Leani can do for him now. The court, by the way, looks very futuristic. Like I, I do. Um, I'm sort of sort of feel like I'm watching a video game. I'm, I'm not sure what exactly is bringing up these feelings, but um, I guess it just looks very neat and sort of you know modern. The Spanish captain as well is there arguing now, uh, but well. What can they do, right? The Spanish captain is, by the way, Jorge Aguirre. Yeah, Jorge Aguirre. Not exactly familiar with him. I think he was a player, right? Some time ago, but I'm, I'm not too familiar with him, honestly. Oh, I guess it's a, it's Davidovich Fukina's coach. And then, yeah, at least someone, someone says it here. On, on this website that I just googled. Uh, but anyway, of course, nothing can be done right now since they can't show the challenge, and Davidovich Fokina will just have to surrender this point to a Brazilian. Now he's showing it to Tiago as well, but you know how how uh, long that serve was. But yeah, let's just let's just play, guys. I mean. Everyone is eager to see some tennis, not that. And it seems that here we go now, as Tiago Sebovic is back. Yeah, that, that Spanish captain is actually Davidovich Fokina's coach. So obviously he was also a little more agita agitated than uh, he would have been otherwise. I don't know that Brazilian captain at all. And now we properly kick off with a real point. It's actually a pretty nice back and down the line from Sabov Build. Obviously not his stronger shot, but from time to time he's able to punish players from that wing as well. And he does get a nice point here to go up 30 love. You got to see some tennis. Um, is this the official start of the 2024 year? Yeah, I wish there was like a challenger that started earlier and I could say, you know, that, yeah, but there was a challenger match that was first, but actually no, challengers aren't going to start until Sunday. So this is it. This is, this is really it. Yeah, now a very similar back and down the line is just going to be quite wild from Thiago Seibovil. Sorry if I make this pun a few times today. I actually wasn't intending to, you know, no pun intended, but. It just happens with his name. As John says, we are very close to 5,000 subscribers. So you know what to do. We were sort of intending to get there before the end of this year. So, you know, it's going to be close, but currently it looks like we might just miss out, miss out. But, well, who knows? If you help out, we might actually get there. Um, anyway, another big serve from the Brazilian. So already two free points in this game. And obviously one of them was questionable. However, historically, you know, that, that's how it's going to be in the whatever breakdown or or the basically the history books. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a very nice game from the um, 20 whatever year old. <laughs> I should know it. Twenty-two or oh yeah, that's that would be my guess. I guess no, it's, he's probably already older. Yeah, twenty-three actually. And um, yeah, he he also clinches this game with a plus one forehand that was just a little too fast for Davidovich Fokina. Amazing wrist acceleration. He is he starts this off well and already kind of shows you that you know he he is better on hard courts than his results would suggest. Maybe this match will show us by just how much, like whether he is actually 
capable of a lot or maybe he will be exposed eventually by a player like Davidovich Fokina. But I don't think I, I finished this earlier when I was saying that Davidovich Fokina is, is certainly not a player who is like, you know, um, just impossible to upset. He has weaker matches, he has erratic days, he has perhaps moments when his shot selection is not up to par. And, um, you know, you, you can get that guy frustrated. You can get that guy angry. Perhaps this is why he still hasn't won an ATP, why he still hasn't won an ATP title. So I guess we have like a very different career path for both of them, right? Sapovic wins an ATP title, then for two years is really struggling, whereas Davidovich Fokina is just like putting in results really consistently and actually still doesn't have that in his trophy cabinet. But anyway, we uh, begin the first service game of the match that where Davidovich Fokina is the one starting and this is a pretty nice point where he moves save of beats around certainly not too fast there from Thiago honestly as you probably know three groups of the United Cup this year are held in Perth three are in Sydney Today we are just in Perth. Sydney will start tomorrow. I think that's an ace out wide from Davidovich Fokina. Not sure if Sabovic will challenge that. It was pretty close to the line, but yeah, it doesn't seem like he will. So that's. That almost was another ace, but it seems like there was a let. Aggressive move from Save of Wild, and it pays off. He instantly runs around his backhand, slams the forehand return. Davidovich Fukina almost got it back. It was like a very central, uh, you know, di centrally directed return from the Brazilian, but was just fast enough to get him the point anyway. The last time I did any of these watch-alongs was the next-gen finals, right? And that was a very different event, of course, in terms of the speed of play as well. And um, it's take, it might take me a while to adjust. <laughs> Yeah, that's a cool rally from Davidovich Fokina as well. Uh, blast the plus one shot, get, gets to the net, and then a very smart choice on the volley going against the legs. Not much that Sabovic can do. Having to change direction and also having to launch for it. So, yeah, one, one game all. So far, so good from both. The court seems pretty fast to me, but, of course, it's quite early to talk about that yet some familiar faces on the spanish bench as well of course sara Silves tormo who's going to be playing later but also guys like roberto carvaez baena david vega hernandez the uh, spanish doubles player for spain well spanish doubles player for spain of course he's spanish then the doubles player uh, for spain um yeah and and this format of course might actually end in mixed doubles if we get a tie one one all but i think even in, in in every case right the mixed doubles will happen regardless of uh of what will be uh in the first two matches like th there can be a change of nomination of course the the one of the teams might feel like okay we won the match we're gonna put in a slightly weaker lineup but uh no but but like the mixed doubles is happening anyway not like in davis cup finals that we've had recently and so far, the players nominated are Sari Bestormo, Davidovic, Fokina. So they're going with their singlists for Spain. And for Brazil, it's Patrice Haddad Maia and Marcelo Melo, not Thiago Sebo Wild, which I think is the is the right call. I guess with Spain, it's kind of uncertain whether Vega Hernandez or Davidovic Fokina is actually the better doubles option. Of course, it's hard to tell because Davidovic Fokina is not playing doubles all that much. Here we have a pretty long rally, Sapovit holding up quite well. That was a nice forehand with more spin on it. 
And now he's just probably going to blast it, goes to the net, and throws out the finishing volley. Great point from him, but just the finishing touch was, was off. I think he also got to it a little late, uh, probably a little hesitant on the uh, decision to even venture forward. And that probably led to him playing that shot maybe a lit in a little bit of an uncomfortable position between the service box and the baseline. More or less, you know, not, not exactly close to the net, which is never ideal. But the point itself, I, I, I think it was pretty great. He's back and held up even when he was really pushed deep into his corner. And then um, the forehand had just su such nice combination of spin and pace, sort of upping the spin first and then when getting an easier ball, obviously blasting it. Blasting is exactly what Davidovich Fokina tried to do with this return. And it wasn't a bad attempt, but he doesn't get the point. Now it's Thiago Seibovil's case to uh, sort of turn to talk to Lajani about something, but that at least that one was pretty brief. Not sure what he was showing him with his racket. That body surf could have been really good, but it, it seems like it's just long. Oh, that's a pretty weird neutral rally error from Davidovich Fokina. Just overcooks the slice a little bit. Seems like he has save of it where he wants him at first because the Brazilian's backhand was like looking a little shaky, but yeah, just doesn't hit the slice too cleanly and it falls out. 40 15, two game points. Ooh, wild second serve. Again, no pun intended, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah, he tried to give it a lot of, a lot of kick, but that was actually like half a meter out. So one more game point, and this time he'll probably be more careful if it comes to the second serve. And it will. Almost an ace, but it's not in. So indeed, this time he goes for a much more conventional second serve. Davidovich Fokina moving him around pretty well, but it seems that Sebovit will be back in the rally. And I think this shot is out from Davidovich Fokina. Lots of variety with how the Spaniard was playing here. The height, the depth, even the pace, but Sebovit survives that sort of unbothered by all of, all of these shenanigans thrown at him. And it's eventually Davidovich Fokina who throws out this cross court forehand again, sort of trying to be very different with the ball that he was feeding Saibovit. We'll see if that's you know that, that sort of play continues, but I guess maybe that's a that's a strategy designed to sort of cool down the fire of the Brazilians' ground strokes, especially the forehand side, of course. Um, we'll see. So far, he is handling it okay. Apparently, the Australian Open prize money has risen. I'm, I missed a lot of messages in the chat, which I'm now going to get back to that. Something about the Tiago win over Medvedev. Yeah, I, I believe he can win too. I think he is much better in hard courts than, than generally speaking, his results suggest. So it's fine. Lots of confidence regarding the Brazilian team in the chat. But no, I get it. I mean, Hadat Maya obviously the favorite over Soriba Stormo, although you sort of expect that match to be close after their French Open thriller. And who would be the favorite in the doubles? We probably have to say Brazil, right? 
Hadat Maya, Melo, that seems like a super strong team on paper, so. Ooh, and, and also regarding the Australian Open prize money, the biggest increase will go to players out in the qualifying and in the early rounds. So that's obviously something that I am very in favor of. And um, especially the qualifying, I feel like it, it will even more sort of widen the gap between making slam qualifying and not making it because currently it's like, you know, if you're ranked about 250, it can really make or break your season. <laughs> I refuse to watch 2024. I saw I saw your tweet, Miles, about that. I'm I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> what you're talking about, honestly, when this 2024 thing. But well, of course, I will walk you for the match. I will walk all of you guys for the match, hopefully. Sebovit was trying to stop Davidovich Fokina just before serving. I don't think Alejandro saw it. I don't think Layani saw it either. So it is an ace. I can confirm that Sebovic was stopping him, but I, well, you know, it's also not Davidovich Fokina's fault. Maybe not Layani either. Well, maybe he was just looking at Davidovich Fokina. Who cares? Yeah, TSW is is an abbreviation of Thiago Sebovic. I definitely use a ton. Um, I'm not sure it's it's quite in you know as popular as. RCB, PCB, like you, literally you could say PCB in, in the middle of the stream, right? And everyone would know who I'm talking about, RBA especially. Um, but um, I guess I'm just going to have to stick with the full name then. Um, does Sabovit have a good net game? Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's okay. It, it's workable in singles. It's not part of, you know, main part of his game plan or whatever. Uh, has he played much doubles? Um, I think he actually was pretty close to the top 100 in doubles. Like, he's had some success. Um, that doesn't mean that he's played much, because he actually hasn't, but he just had some deep ATP runs. In fact, last year, at the ATP 250 in Santiago, he was a very surprise finalist with uh, Matias Soto. That was a, quite a shocking run, honestly. But, you know, clearly he can be competitive. Looks like this game will be pretty smooth for WWH Fokina as well. Yeah, Miles, I mean, if Rafa is playing in Brisbane, you, you will have to watch it, regardless if it's 2024 or not. But but yeah, probably he's not going to be playing on the first day. Also, if it's Marin Cilic in Hong Kong, for example. Although I think Brisbane starts one day earlier, so I think it's only the first day of Brisbane, right? Oh, and John already says that Rafa is playing doubles on 31st. Oh, wow, really? I, to this moment, even didn't even know that he's playing doubles, honestly. So, um, Yeah, I, I can see the feather thing in Sabovit, yeah. It, it, it is a similar, I don't know, facial type? I don't know what to call it. But certainly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Miles will make an exception for Rafa, so it's fine. Who else is on Team Spain, says Jane? So we've got Saras Ribes Tormo, and it might be the only thing that matters. If they want to switch some things around, they can also use Vega Hernandez for the doubles or Carbaez Baena for the second, well, for the singles, but of course they're going to keep going with um, Davidovich Fukina. So I think the only, like, uh, relevant players in terms of they might use them are Davidovich Fokina, Soribes Tormo, and, Se and uh, Vega Hernandez. Uh, the others, Carpaez Baena, you know, has no use in this team because he's the second singlest and now second singles players don't play. And um, the women, the other women, Basos Ripera and Vicente Mas, I, I doubt they're going to be used for doubles. So it's really only Davidovich Fokina and Soribes Tormo most likely that they're going to be using. <laughs> Jesus. My middle initial is K. I don't use it, though. I, I have a second name, but I don't really use it. I don't, you know, I'm not ashamed of it or anything. It's actually after my grandpa, uh, who died two years before I was born. 
and I think it's a very nice gesture. I, you know, I, I wasn't, of course, a part of the sort of <laughs> planning process for that. I, I, I wasn't a part of the decision, but I, I do like that uh, sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'm not using the second name. So it is DKK, theoretically. Um, yeah, and we have the Agasaito Fleet with another super easy hold. Of course, that's good for him that he's holding up so far. Um, I mean, he's such a confident guy. I don't think he really thought about this match any other way. Like, I think he entered it, you know, feeling like he can win 100%. But yeah, so far he hasn't been worse than WH15 any other way. WTF would be good, yeah, if we had a player like this. Do we have like someone with WF? Uh, we would have to think about it, but maybe. And Rafa is playing. What? And Rafa is playing with Mark Lopez, really? Isn't Mark Lopez retired? <laughs> you, you can't see it, but John is nodding. So I guess both are true. But that's really surprising to me, yeah. Oh, kind of shows you that he just wants as much tennis as possible. That's also a pretty good omen, I suppose. You could argue that Mark Lopez is kind of ruining his retirement because he played his last event with Carlos Alcaraz and we were all like, wow, that's so cool. But actually he's playing with Graf and Nadal now. <laughs> and of course they, they're friends, they want the Olympics. So uh, I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I remember, I think we're alone now, Ghosty. Um, you, you've been on the streams a ton. You, you, you've probably heard me talking about some old music. So I, I, I do know I think we're alone now. Do I love it? I don't know. But um, yeah, it's a decent one hit wonder. Although I, I don't remember, of course, from my, from my childhood. I think I actually discovered it by myself years later. I've kind of missed Martin Chilich. He says Miles, he swan song in 2024. Hopefully not, right? I mean, we haven't seen him, like, barely, we've, we've barely seen him in 2023. So I, I really want him to play, like, at least a couple more years because we were sort of... A year was stolen from us. But we'll see how... You know what sort of shape he comes back in. I heard like a month ago that he was definitely ready for the 2024 season. So I guess just like in Rafa's case, there is there are some reasons to be hopeful. That's pretty smooth from David Fokina as well, taking the backhand so early and yeah, so far definitely they're just blasting the ball really, and and it seems like the court is fast as well. I will hold back on this like I, I will wait with this but it seems like it's playing very fast you know it, it could be very hot as well that's how it seems so maybe maybe this is also playing into it but uh yeah I guess soon enough we're gonna have Sorry Bestorm and Hadat Maya and like whatever the surface is they're gonna make it look slow especially the the Spaniards so we might get some contrasting opinions after day one depending on which match you watched but Well, seems like another super quick hold for David Fokina. He hasn't had anything else so far. Are you trying to guess my, my middle name? I think I said it already. It's Karol, so it's like Charles, but in Polish, K-A-R-O-L. Like Karol Wojtyła, John Paul II. <laughs> but as I said, it's not, it's not after him. Um, and I also have a third name from the, you know, whatever the name of the um, Christianity thing is that you get when you're like 16. And it's Andrzej, the name of my father. But that's even way less like useful. useful. Um, I, I only use the first one and only the second is like a uh, official thing. The third one is just religious and I don't think I've been to church since that very day. So <laughs> I think we can say with um, full 
uh, confidence that I'm not really using that either. Ooh, <laughs> oh, Jesus, and uh, that's that's a blasted backhand now. That Sablefield just absolutely going for it on this backhand cross, plus one shot. And um, yeah, I mean, it's all going in so far for both players, really. The Brazilian team liking that, the Meliganis, but also Marcelo Melo, of course. Now, that's the point that Sablefield doesn't want to be playing, but so far he's winning a fair amount of them. But yeah, he, he tried to bail out of it way too early with this dropper. That's not going to cut it, and WH Fokina is quickly there to pounce. There, there have been a few times, I guess, when uh, especially when he has a lot of distance to cover, Sablefield's movement hasn't, hasn't looked too good, but well. Maybe it's a hardcore thing for him as well. Um, I think on clay he usually looks better. But I also cannot really tell you because I haven't seen a hardcore match of his in a while. Um, um, I think maybe I even didn't watch him on hard last year. I certainly watched him on grass last year, didn't I? I think I watched him on grass last year. But I, I, it's possible that I didn't watch him at all on hardcore last year. So, um, so it, it's actually been a while for me. So, I'm also glad that I'm watching this much because of that. Of course, he hasn't had too many chances to impress on that surface. I did watch him live on Hard Courts, though, 2022 in Kozerki three matches. So, so I have some sample. Although back then, Tiago Sepovit was a very different player, honestly. Like after the two years of struggling, he was so low in confidence, and at the forehand was not a weapon. I know when 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 you're watching him now, it's kind of unbelievable, but the forehand was actually not a weapon. I was watching that uh, him that, that day or you know that weekend. I was like, didn't this guy used to have like a monster forehand when he won an ATP Tour title? And I almost had to like put on the highlights of that event to make sure that that was the case, that I'm not misremembering things. But well, now he's confident, he sort of changed his team, his, let's say, his um, habitat even. He moved uh, his training base to Argentina last year, and I mean, he's only gone upwards since, so clearly a good call. Here he might be in trouble, though, in a long rally at 30-15, blasting the, the back end down the line, but Davidovich Fokina is quick to counter, he forces another tough shot out of Sablefield. He was trying to take his forehand on the run, and he nets it. So two breakpoints for the Spaniard. And um, so far, definitely, whenever we get that sort of an exchange, it's Sablefield who sort of starts feeling like he has to go for broke. I'm not sure he actually did. Like I, I, I don't think he needed to go for that down the line on the run blast. But it is his game, you know. He, he his talent is sort of based on this so maybe maybe it's fine anyway two breakpoints now and we might see the set running away from him soon if he doesn't manage to survive it's a net court from davidovich fokina but it's not exactly hurting shape of build <laughs> to go to this point earlier now he goes to the net and it will look like a ridiculously good volley and you know he's he's, he's actually really competent there I think it was slightly weaker than it, than it seems because he, well, again, he went to the net with like a little hesitation. But of course, the end result is really nice. So, but yeah, it, it easily could have been like in that third game, really. Uh, but he saves the, saves the first break point. Would like to see maybe a little more, yeah dedication to the craft in that uh, in that um, net approach but of course eventually it ended up being absolutely fine now that we have has say of it moving and oh and finally a great counter Ooh, I mean this point will take some will take a while to unpack 
So basically, this was the first time really when Davidovic Fukina has Sabovic moving and the Brazilian doesn't really go for like a slice, a squash shot. He actually counters, but he doesn't like go for broke. He counters on the slide cross court, was a great shot. He ended up being in control of the point. But again, maybe a little bit of hesitation after the approach shot. But probably more so, you have to praise the uh, backhand pass of Davidovich Fokina on the run down the line. He finds the shot, he finds the uh, window for himself, and he breaks. Great point from, from both players, really. Saberfield coming back from the brink of defeat already, then taking um, over because of that great forehand counter, slamming the forehand cross. But Davidovich Fokina is there with the backhand pass. Very fast. David Alejandro is, of course, and at the same time, the control that he got on that backhand pass was, was definitely quite sublime. Um, Alcaraz played with Lopez here yeah, in Madrid. <laughs> yeah, Kirit says that Hailey Baptiste is the first 2024 winner, and that's, of course, Brisbane qualifying, in case someone didn't know. Brisbane qualifying on the WTA side has already started today. Uh, since then, we also have had Sofia Lancere making it through. Olivia Gadecki is looking close as well. Are there any interesting matches today? Uh, oh, wow. I mean, that, that's sick, right? In, in the qualifying for Brisbane, Diana Astremska playing Suecia. I don't know how competitive Suecia will be. Of course, she won two slams last year. But that was in doubles, needless to say. Uh, yeah, good that you said. Um, yeah, exactly. Ash Ashley was asking for Grafa, but I see someone already answered that. TNNS says Thiago Sebovic's first serve is 38%. That's possible. Yeah, he has been like really going for it. And I don't think a lot of these attempts have gone in. But apparently after the last game, it's up to 48%. However, he lost that game, so <laughs> it clearly wasn't too much of an improvement. Is clay the most common accessible in Brazil? Yes, absolutely. Of course, I'm not Brazilian, but uh, clay courts is definitely the most common surface in South America. You have some courts, but, well, Brasilia... Um, the capital of Brazil, of course, held the challenger on hard courts just a couple of weeks back. You've got the Rio de Janeiro courts as well, the ones where the Olympics were held. But um, the most common is definitely um, clay. And now that's maybe what I was expecting of Sebovit earlier. He doesn't go for broke. He doesn't go for a ridiculous shot down the line when Davidovic Fokina has him on the move. Instead, he takes advantage of his natural athleticism, which he has, and um, manages to make his way back into this rally. So that's a glimmer of hope, definitely, for uh, the Brazilian, especially considering he needs to break soon, and it is 15-0 now. And um, yeah, that's one of the first long rallies he's won in a while, I think. So yeah, but that second serve return... Hmm. I guess it was a pretty good one, but well, given his position in the game, you kind of got to try. Yeah, yeah, Kiri, I was mentioning the Meriganis earlier. They're sitting together as well, so it was kind of easy to spot them because Karol Karol I mean, Karolina I wouldn't have probably picked out of a lineup, honestly. <laughs> but of course, Fernando. Um, Fernando is quite famous in the challenger ranks, let's say. Also related to a famous Brazilian player, of course, Felipe Marigani, who had a deep run at the French about 25 years ago. It's a great return now from Sebovic, though, but it's still 40-30. Again, trying to just use that wrist power, go at the on Davidovich Fokina in the middle, and it works. But this next point will obviously be quite key.
he has what he wants. He's playing forehand after forehand, most of them from the backhand position, and he wins the point. Yeah, I mean, he definitely would have been gutted if he lost this rally because from the get-go, he was getting exactly what he wanted out of this. So it's good for him to capitalize eventually. Davidovich Fokina returning like five of these huge shots, but eventually not getting there. So it's deuce. There is an opportunity. Do I have unforced error stats? Um, hmm. Let me see. Oh, that's an eight, an ace from Davidovich Fokina. Let me just see if they're on the ATP website because that's reliable. I'm not gonna even check if Flash Score has them because it's it's not going to be like this. I mean, I mean it's not gonna be reliable, definitely not. I will check the ATP website, but that might not work out. We'll see. And that's Davidovich Fokina clinching the game. Five three. Just one hold away, but he also get this freebie now. Um, no, there is no unforced error stats on the ATP website, so I don't think we can really find a reliable source for them. Outside of uh, you know the feed that we're going to be getting, maybe after the set we're going to get some stats. I actually don't remember how the stats for uh, you know the stat boards, whatever the tables look for um, the United Cup. So we're going to have to wait and see, I suppose. Welcome to season 2024. Yeah, that sound, unfortunately, I know what it is. I'm going to try to do something about that. When I don't have a tripod or whatever, the, the whole con my microphone construction with me, I have to put it somewhere close to my laptop. And my laptop is, well, pretty old by now. Uh, but it, it's not about that. It's about the fact that it has a broken fan. So I'm going to try to move the microphone away from my laptop. But, um, you know, I, I'm afraid that it might not work. I'm afraid that it might still be there. We'll see. I can also try to move my mic even further away from it and put it here on the armchair, which could actually work. I'm gonna be have I'm gonna have to be wor more wary about my movement now, but I think this could be better. Hopefully. But yeah, um, I think I'm going to be driving back to my uh, my flat tomorrow. So then I'll have the, the whole setup and that's not going to be an issue. But whenever I'm mobile with the streams, podcasting, whatever, uh, it could be a bit of a thing. You know, it, some, it's also, it also comes and goes. Like, sometimes it just quiets down randomly. For some reason, I have this terrible luck with laptop fans. And basically, whenever I buy a laptop, after two months, the fan is gone. <laughs> I don't know why, but well. And then I don't really have the time to give it back to repair. Because, well, it, it's still working and, you know, I have to use it for work, so... Yeah, maybe December was the perfect time, right? I probably should have repaired it in December, but you know me, I'm a bit lazy. Anyway, 3015, same of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about, wow, okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that I'm not sure about Davidovich Fokina raising, like the, you know, giving a lot more loop on a lot of these balls because it seems like it really suits Sabovid's contact point. But then again, I mean, when he redirects his back down the line like this, then who cares that Sabovid just slapped the ball, right? 
I mean, if you can do that to a strong shot from the opponent, then I guess everything is going right for you. And 11 winners already from David Chokina. That I can tell you because it was on my screen, the unforced error stats. Nope. I wouldn't I don't think they're that high for save of it though. I'm not sure that that's why he's losing. I think a lot of his errors have been forced. Like this one will qualify as forced. It was his choice to go for broke with this shot, but it, it it's still a forced error. And it is a set point for Davidovich Fokina as well. Again, sort of when Davidovich Fokina is moving Saibofield from one corner to another, there are some issues that the Brazilian encounters. Yeah, and from three to up, Thiago Saibovit might might lose this set three six with two breaks as well. And it's gonna be a second serve too. Not expecting him to risk it, definitely, like like he did in that third game. Probably expecting more of a safer approach, but he actually goes for it. Quite a lot. The placement on this was was pretty bold, and Davidovich Fokina was just forced to react, you know, intuitively, try to catch it at the best possible angle, which he didn't. So, first set point saved, and we are back to deuce. I'm not sure whether he risked it or not, but certainly the placement was. Wow, and, and that's a great serve as well. I mean, you're not going to get there. Definitely not going to cover this angle. So, advantage save of it now. He has saved the set point, and he might as well pose the question to Davidovich Fokina. Ask him, are you going to serve it out? And we'll see if Alejandro can. But for now... Let's see if this game will indeed go Sebovit's way. It does. The plus one forehand could have been directed a bit better, but it's still sharp enough. It's still hard enough for him to win the game. So after 42 minutes, is it 42? No, 43. 43. Alejandro Davidovich Fukina leads 5-4 and will be trying to serve. I'm having a hard time not being annoyed by the Paul. Hmm. I'm not sure which Paul. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a Polish laptop fan, Gusty. Like I, I, I'm not sure where I bought it. Maybe it's it's actually from a different country. Um, I probably got it off the internet. I'm assuming. Nah, it's probably Polish. Um, but yeah, it's a little quieter now. Oh, and it's back to being louder. But, well, uh, I've, I've gotten used to it, you know. Could be irritating, but I've gotten used to it. Hopefully you, you, you're not going to hear it now that my mic is a little closer. Save so we'll getting some good talk in with the Brazilian captain. As I said, I'm not really sure who that is, so I might just Google that since we have a changeover anyway. Um, I know the guy's name is Rafael Passiaroni. I don't know if you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, Brazilian phonetics. But it could be, is it maybe a case of him being a coach of someone as well? So it's, it's a Brazilian who's age, who is a, oh, so it's Haddad Maya's coach. Yeah, so, so similarly to to um, the Spanish team where they have Alejandro Davidovich Fokina's coach. Here, the uh, Brazilian captain is just Halep Maya's coach. Anyone fun in the 15K in Monasty this week? Asks Keen. What the hell are you doing it up at 4 a.m., Keen? But anyway, oh, I guess it's 3 a.m. I guess it's 3 a.m. for you. So, well, it's more acceptable. <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, actually, no, not really, right? Um, I know you've probably looked at the field as well. And 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, I've been struggling to get excited by the recent ITF events. Mostly, I don't really feel like they generated any storylines so far. Like last year, that, that's not ITFs, that's WTA 125s, but in December, you've had Alicia Parks, for example, right? In in the ITFs, you've had Menshik, Prismich last year in December, and now you don't really have these sort of storylines. So in case anyone wants to watch it, the W40 in Navi Mumbai has, is streamed. It's very early in the morning for me. It's probably going to be exactly when I sleep today because I'm going to sleep after this match and, and then wake up after it's it, it's done, basically. But yeah, the, the recent ITF weeks, I feel like they haven't really generated the storylines that, uh, that they did in 2022, their respective tournaments. So um, yeah, actually not too excited about that Monastir lineup. Not that we can watch it anyway. We can just follow along with the scores, unlike in India. Anyway, uh, love 30, actually, and, and that was a pretty sloppy error from Davidovic Fukina, so maybe saving that one set point is going to be crucial for save of it. Will it be three breakpoints now, or will it be... I think Davidovic Fukina thought he missed that backhand, actually, which was... A little funny. I think he was already expecting to be low forty out. The backhand landed in, and a few shots, a few shots later, Sabovid misses his own backhand. He's sort of laughing about how you know, cramped his his position was. So it's still fifteen thirty, but that was a bit of a chance. Nice return. From the Brazilian, and yeah, he gets an inside in, inside out forehand. Was going down the middle with it, I guess, but he nets it. There wasn't a lot of time on it, but of course he's a little disappointed with it because he feels like any time he hits a forehand, he should be winning the point, which is sort of true. <laughs> that return is really short, though, and David Fukina will just eat it up. So it's set point number two, and this time it's going to be on his own serve. Looks like that low third, low 30 wobble might not matter after all. And as we as we can remember, the Brazilian was also really close to winning the third point with when Davide Chokina miss hit the backhand. Now he's really close to losing the set, and sort of everything is in Davide Chokina's hands. Maybe not now, because it's a second serve. Uh, seemed like the return from Sabovid was going to be bigger. It actually wasn't. What a crazy what a crazy point. Davidovich Fukina drops it, drop shot Sabovid. He barely gets there and plays this redrop, which seems to have surprised Davidovich Fukina quite a lot. Um, there are two schools of thought here, I guess. You could argue that after this drop shot, Davidovic Fokina should have been at the net already because it was clear that Sabovid wouldn't be able to play any other shot than just, you know, get it up into the air. But, well, the Spaniard did not decide to do that. And now we're back to 40-0. Yeah, but that's another really strong play based on his serve. Had to hit a backhand plus one and then another backhand cross with Sabovid doing some decent scrambling. But that's another shot. That's another point that's just won by the Davidovic Fokina serve. This isn't going to be won by his delivery, though. This is actually a rally, and he is the one to crack first. Forehand and first error from Davidovic Fokina. So for now, Sabovid is still surviving. I think that was the third set point.
Ooh. Yeah, that's that's not an error that Saberfield should be making in this moment. I know it is his backhand, but still. He was like two meters away from the court, taking it really slow, just trying to put it back in, but fourth set point for WW Fokina, third on his serve. So you kind of feel like surely it's gonna be now, right? But will it? Now he gets a short ball and this drop shot will not be chased down by Thiago Sabofield. So six for Davidovic Fokina. A bit of issues near the end. He actually was taken to deuce in both the 4-3 game and also the 5-4 game. So um, the um, ease of holding that he had early in the set did not exactly follow um, into that um, last part of it. However, the one break being key still holds up. And now we have the unforced error stats that Ghost he was hoping for. 10 from Davidovich Fokina, 12 from Saibovild. That sounds pretty accurate to me. I didn't feel like there was going to be a big discrepancy. 82% of points won on his first serve by Davidovich Fokina and 71% first serve percentage. So that kind of tells you how he's been holding as well. And and um, yeah, I think a little point arguing that he was the better player in this in this set. But still a decent showing from Sabovild. You know, he, he can certainly enter the second set with hope, with you know confidence that he is in the match. He he definitely hasn't been completely outmatched or anything. You know, that probably wasn't on the cards for today anyway, but but yeah, that, that, that's not happening. Up for work in four hours, getting prepared for the Austrian Open. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't have to be up for work, but I do have to be up for tennis. I'm playing at noon tomorrow, so 11 a.m. is when I have to wake up because it's like 30 kilometers from where I am right now. And uh, oh, shit, that was my phone. Um, so hopefully this match is not going to be overly long. That's probably going to be sorry, Bestormo had that Maya, right? Like they're going to deliver the the four hour thriller. <laughs> Keen pretty harsh there. When Omni Kumar is the number one seed, it's tough to be excited, but it's actually very accurate. I'm sorry. Not double bounce, Emiliano. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. That was the first dropper from Davidovich Fokina, right? But I don't think it was close. No, I think he got it. But but I, I understand. Like when I when I first saw that, I was definitely excited to see the replay. Let's say let's call it like this. Um, W15 Monastir says Kirit as well. I actually hasn't been checking that too much, but I don't think it's that good anyway, right? Yasmin Mansuri, the sister of of uh, Skander, is the oh, she's not the number one seed there, I guess. It's it's some other Moroccan, no, sorry, Mor Moroccan. Oh, it's a different player, I think. It's um it's a player from Hong Kong, Karunatne. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, I, I haven't been checking up on that event either. So um there there were quite a few Brazilians in the chat at first ghosty, so I think they might have voted for for Tiago. Yeah. Sort of, sort of true, John. Yeah, sort of true. Um, I actually haven't seen the results of the poll. I will, I will do it right now. But, but uh, I think we had a lot of Brazilian wat watchers at the very beginning. Uh, but anyway, they have started the second set already. Oh. And that's a nice um, showcase of the elite 
save of Vid forehand. That finish of cross court was ridiculous and and you know the other point when he gets something like this, so like seven out of eight shots probably that he played were forehands, he's usually gonna be in control. What was I gonna check? Ah, yeah, the, the the stream, the poll. I wanted to check what the result of that is, since you guys are talking about it. Um. Oh wow, one hundred and ninety-five votes. Really? Yeah. Then I I do think it was like a large group of Brazilians or Sabovid followers. That's interesting. And we have a new poll as well. Who's winning the United Cup? Poland, United States, Serbia, or other? Um, I know I am Polish, so my opinion kind of doesn't matter, but, but Poland has a very good chance, I think. The problem with the United States, I guess, is that both Pagula and Fritz are like sort of at the same level of being really consistent, but not probably not favored against most top other top players. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that when they run into a team that's at the strength of, for example, Poland, I'm not sure if I'm going to be backing the States in, in such a match. And they could play each other in the semis, I think, Poland and the United States, which would be a massive match. Uh, this is actually Poland's group, what we're watching right now. Um, Poland is in the group with Spain and Brazil. Sydney or Perth, which one is faster? I mean, we haven't seen Sydney yet, right? Last year, it was Sydney that was considered really fast. And um, when the players were jumping from Brisbane to Sydney, it was a huge jump. Although recently, I found some stats from back in the day, and actually Brisbane was supposed to be faster than Sydney. So I guess they, they you know, changed it up. Um, so yeah, we haven't seen it yet. Maybe it's going to be different this year. Who knows? But this pair of court is looking pretty fast to me. No, this year, of course, in case you guys didn't know, it's only Brisbane and Perth. Uh, sorry, it's only Perth and Sydney. Brisbane is, of course, holding a, its own WTA and ATP event, just like it used to be in the pre-pandemic days. And that's a break. That's a little out of nowhere, given that Sabovit won the first two points, and even with that ridiculous forehand cross. Uh, but he makes a couple of sloppy errors, and that's a nice point from Davidovich Fokina, applying the pressure, going at the Sabovit backhand whenever he's on the offense. And again, he the, the Brazilian is just unable to produce a good defensive shot or a pass or a counter, whatever, really. So... Set in a break now for Davidovich Fukina, and things are not looking bright for him. If Russia was here, it would be hard to beat them. So who would you have on the women's side for Russia? Like Samsonova? She's kind of inconsistent, but yeah, I mean, she is capable of beating the best. Is Samsonova the highest ranked Russian right now? Is it still Kasatkina? Or am I forgetting about someone? Let me check that. Mm, it is Samsonova, yeah. Kasatkina is second. So, yeah, one of Samsonova, Kasatkina, Kudermetova. Like, they wouldn't have a truly elite WTA competitor, I guess. They would have They would have Medvedev. I don't know. Um, with Davis Cup, I feel like Russia would have like been instantly instantly the the main favorite to win it but because the format is different here uh, and uh you have to combine with the wta i actually don't think they would be higher than poland or the united states in the rankings sort of is there a website to watch the court speeds on tour no absolutely not we don't have these resources um basically for events ranked so let's say for events lower than five, well, a thousand even, it's impossible to find this data. 
and um, yeah, it's a shame. Sometimes you can find like fan made stats based on ace percentage, and they are pretty good, um, actually, especially when someone like Tennis Abstract, Jeff Sackman, uh, he has been sort of whenever he does that, and he he does a post like this like every once in a while maybe. Uh, probably like every once once every few years is what I mean, but uh, I think he was also like including in that in that ace percentage. He was also including the general ace rate for the players. So like if you would have Ivo Karlovic playing at an event, it wouldn't ju- just rate that much higher than an event with I don't know someone of a weak serve. Um, Diego Schwartzman, but it would all be adjusted to how likely a, a player is to hit an ace in the first place, that to the surface. But of course, that has it, you know, it has its issues, needless to say. Um, so, um, yeah, basically, there's no data like this existing that's official and reliable, really, below the 1000 level. So, um, yeah, we can only just judge based on the eye test for the most part. And sometimes, as I said, sometimes a fan-made project. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Ghosty that the Russians have so many players, but like you can only use one here, realistically. So uh, probably some Solnovar, Kasatkina for now. Maybe in a couple of years, if we got a team of Medvedev and Andrieva, that would be, that would be amazing, right? But who knows? Maybe maybe the war will be over by then, hopefully, and uh, maybe that sort of a team will actually um, be on the be in the event at some point. Yeah, I mean this is really running away from Sabovil very quickly at the moment. There's a forehand pass from WH Fokina as well to go low fifteen up in the next game. And again, it's like a Sabovid hits a huge top spin stroke and goes to the net with like a bit of a delay, a bit of hesita- hesitation. Sometimes you can pull it off, especially when it's like by design and you just want to surprise the other player. But he, he's not doing it right. He's like absolutely just giving Davidovich Fokina some free points because of it. Sometimes key points. Just like the pass in the first set, although that that first set was a less clear cut example, here it was absolutely obvious. But anyway, David Chokina misses the uh, backhand return down the line, so it's not completely danger zone for Sabovil yet. But you know he is in trouble. Oh, wow, and he's also not going to win this point. Although this one I can't really blame him for, I think. This actually could have worked out for him if it wasn't for Davidovich Fukina's shot being this good. Um, I'm talking of that forehand defensive resource he came up with, just making it very hard for Sabovit on the volley. But again, if you want to argue that he should have been at the net earlier, Maybe, um, definitely. Uh, probably didn't feel like there was a need, there was a need for it, given the the forehand was so huge. But well, anyway, fifteen thirty. Sorry for yawning, but it is four thirty four fourteen a.m. We are all getting ready for Australia when we're not going to be sleeping, sleeping for about a month. Yeah, and um, this this time the pun will be intended. And I'm going to say that Thiago Sebovilt is now completely wild, has gone off the boil. That backhand plus one. Yep, and two break points for Davidovich Fokina to be up a set and two breaks. The first serve isn't going to go in either.
tries to go for an inside out forehand, just absolutely slap it, but it's not going in. Nothing's going in at the moment. It's kind of surprising how quickly Sebovid just went away. Not exactly after the first break. We can't really say that uh, because he had he still had these deuces. You know, he was saving set points left and right. But after losing the first set, and especially after getting broken in the first game of the second, yeah, it's been a nightmare for him. Oh, and we've already gotten some subscribers since we, uh, since I was talking about it. So yeah, fifty-three left to five k. It's doable, it seems. Um, just two more days, well, three more days, I guess, depending on where you are in the world, but. I'm going to use mine and John's time zone. So it's about 68 hours. Might be doable. It's less than a subscriber an hour. <laughs> TSW serve is really mediocre. I'm being polite, says Ghosty. Um, yeah, it's nothing special. It's not a liability, but it, it is definitely nothing special. Welcome to my world most of the year, says Terry. I actually don't remember what that was about. <laughs> Are you living in like a time zone that's that's rough to watch tennis? Was that, was that about that? I, I can't remember. I, I, I think it might have been. How many games does Fokina have, says Magic? He is leading 6, 4, and 3, love. So he has 9 games, and he's going to win 3 more, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's 6 plus 3, Magic. It, it, it's, six plus, it's 6 plus 3, three so 9. Ah, being awake all night. Okay, that's what you meant. Yeah. The Australian Open, that's what we're gonna that that's what I do just a month a year, but certainly if that's your whole existence, that's rough. Last year when we were doing all of these Australian Open streams, I my body wasn't reacting well to it at some point even. Like going to bed, I would have some I I, I don't know even how to describe it, but like some hear some noise or like have this twitching in my head. No, it, it was super weird. That's an interesting point. I think he has just missed it, but the angles from Davidovich Fukina here were pretty insane. And I guess from the Brazilian as well, like he when he went for that first forehand, he it was his shot that opened up the opportunity for Davidovich Fukina, who sort of could go for a very risky shot down the line or that forehand cross. He did go for the forehand cross and Sabovic just tried to go forehand down the line and, and missed it. And now we also had the unforced error stat on the screen. So since the beginning of the first, on the of the second set, Davidovic Fokina has only hit one, but Sabovic at the same time has hit eight. And that kind of tells you the story of the second set. So I guess this will be another time a match where we're going to say, yeah, this drop shot is too good. This time it was certainly a double bounce. And... Um, yeah, this this will be another match when we're gonna say Sablefield isn't as bad on hard courts as this result would suggest. And then again, when he lost the first set, he lost it. Absolutely lost it completely. So yeah, that was another yawn. How much time is left? There's no time in tennis magic. Like you literally have to just win the match. But it is very likely that Davidovich Fokina will finish it off in like the next 15 minutes. He is he he is currently fighting to get the 10th game on the board. He will have six plus four, and he wants to have six six plus six on his score, basically.
Oh, I mean, I'm not saying that Thiago Sebovic is is better than Clay. Uh, is not better than Clay. Definitely not. I just feel like the discrepancy in his results is a touch, you know, exaggerated. Maybe there, there's no reason why he should have that sort of a yeah. Again, discrepancy in in terms of his hard court and clay court game. What is it the matter of? Who knows? I mean, since since the juniors, he's barely played on hard courts in the pros. He's played like 50 matches compared to about 200 on clay. I don't know. This is this is a bit of a make it or break in the air, right? For 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 um, make or break year for Thiago Sebovit, I think. Given that in the first half of the year he's defending all of these challenger points. But he's not going to be defending them on the Challenger Tour, probably. He's going to be defending them on the main tour. And he's going to be defending them on a surface that's a little subpar for him. I'm not sure we actually will get Thiago Seibo build, you know, as a full-on main tour player, you know, at, at the end of the year. Who knows? But um, I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't have the talent, but... There are some circumstances that could stop him from getting there. Anyway, suddenly it's dues. WWE fucking now losing his concentration for a moment, and and he might still have to work very hard for this game. That backhand a second ago was just narrowly, narrowly missed. But this one is perfect. Um, second serve return from Sabovid. I mean, clearly with the intention of just letting Davidovich Fokina play here. But that didn't work out. It it just had nothing on it. It sat up and something that Davidovich Fokina has been doing very, very well in this match is hitting this back and down the line whenever the ball is just sitting up on him. That's a shot that a lot of players struggle with. It's it's definitely quite tricky for most players to hit this shot from their backhand side. Forehand, everyone can just slap top to bottom, right? But backhand, it does get a lot. It does get really tricky, and I certainly relate to it. You know, it's equally as tough to do in tennis, also in table tennis. Yeah, like it's never a routine shot really but Davidovich Fokina so far has has made it routine and I don't even want to say has made it look routine like he I think he actually has been hitting it absolutely routinely shorter higher ball of the backhand down the line he's been spotless on that yeah and that now save of you this again just making simple almost uncharacteristic errors on his forehand i want to say almost un un uncharacteristic because of course it's a guy that has been well has had some times in his career when he was really down on his confidence and like you know there is it showed in the results so it's not like he hasn't had patches of play like this but we certainly weren't used to it in 2022 Over 22 total games seems very unlikely at the moment. That would require a massive comeback from Sebofit, and at the moment he's not really playing like it. Uh, yeah, Emiliano, sure. Uh, the weaker shot of his and at times in this match it's been holding up but um, probably more than than even the unforced errors of the back end um, probably more so frustrating was how many times he's like two steps behind the baseline trying to defend with that shot and it's not really like producing any real counters. When he has time on it, he's actually been pretty decent on it, I think, aggressively. But again, Davidovich Fukina is redirecting it really well. 
that was another very solid shot from Sabofield, that, that backhand cross, and Davide Chokina just takes it like it's nothing down the line. He actually loses the point too, because he missed the next forehand, but um, as a whole, it was actually a you know, correct play, and um, and I, like that backhand down the line easily could have won him the point. But the moon ball is not taken advantage of. So, two breakpoints to stop the bleeding to, to finally win a game in the second set. That's some good defense from Davido Chukina, though. Uh, very fast there again. The slice is pretty short. Sabovi doesn't really know what to do with it. He chooses the worst possible option, which is dump it into the net. But, um, yeah, it was pretty tricky. I, I can give him a pass for that, for sure. But still, one more game point to finally get on the board. Get to get on the board in the second set. Not yet, though. Not yet. I think now he's getting a little confused as well. He's been going for his shots, you know, most of the match. Now sometimes he feels like maybe he can just rally with Davide Fukina. That's also not working out because the Spaniard is playing very well. And... Yeah, that backhand down the line from Sabovit was really good, but how did Davide Fukina survive in the point? I'm not really sure. And that's that. That's a really good rally. That's that's probably one of the best in the match so far. But it's gonna be David Chokina winning it. The other thing that David Chokina has done really well so far is like make the court look smaller <laughs> for save of it, right? Just shrink it, and. Um, that was a good example of it because that backhand down the line should have given Thiago more advantage, but it actually didn't. And um, Davide Trukina was just able to turn the point around so well. Then, of course, it was like a... Um, well, it, it wasn't exactly a foregone conclusion that the Spaniard was going to win it. He still had to play a pretty tough volley after that. But, but yeah, it's a break point and who knows, maybe we'll not even have Thiago Sepofields get even one point, uh, sorry, one game in this second set. <laughs> he slaps the forehand, Davidovich Fokina is there, drop shot from Sepofield. And that was, by the way, a very correct, a very uh, sort of famous drop shot move from Sepofield. When he first emerged on the tour, he was kind of famous for it. It was a bit of a trademark for him uh, that when he plays a drop shot, he changes the grip on his racket very heavily. Like usually right now, there's this school of like trying to limit that, right? Because you sort of tell the other player what you're going to do. But Sebovind had this great drop shot when he would just completely change the grip and grab the racket very close to the, its head. And that, that, was, uh, that was a trademark of his in the early days of his career. Now it's a little less prevalent, I would say. But... Yeah, he played that a second ago and actually shouldn't have won the point, honestly. It was just Davidovich Fukina's error. The drop shot wasn't too well well executed. This was great, though. The, the cut and mouse rally. Uh, Davidovich Fukina emerges victorious in it after a drop shot. Redrop from Sebovid. Pretty decent as well, but through the net, Davidovich Fukina comes up with this stunning shot on the run. Another break point and absolutely deserved uh, the, the praise from the Spanish box right now because that was that was something. That was one of the best points of the match. Another break point, another second serve as well. And again, he might not even get a game on the board in the second set. Especially as he's on the defense already. Davidovich Fokina dictating with his forehand. Backhand cross at Zabovic's backhand. And another drop shot. 
yeah, he wins it with a drop shot pass. He gave Sabovilt a bit of a chance. Like he he tried to pass him, and Sabovilt actually had it on his racket after that drop shot pass combo from Davidovich Fokina. Uh, but he, I mean, he had it on his racket, not figuratively. He had it literally on his racket, as in he touched the ball with his racket. But you know, he didn't get a clean hit on it. He didn't have time. It was just a reaction. It could have gone in. Like you know, it was a little risky, but. For from Davidovich Fukina's perspective, but anyway, yeah, six four five love, pretty much a spotless performance from Davidovich Fukina, honestly, and um, it seems like he will be cruising to it. Barrios Vera drop shot says Emiliano, which is interesting. I guess Barrios Vera plays it a little bit too, yeah. Thomas Barrios Vera will also be at the United Cup, by the way. Jay, I'm not a fan of this decision because he should be trying to break the top 100. He's really close to it, but he's defending a final soon. He might never make it. But anyway, well, he's he's of course not going to be playing number one for Chile. That's Nicolas Jari. Um, yeah, and who's winning the United Cup in our poll? We have Other leading, actually. So you guys feel that Other has a higher chance than these three. Interesting. I wonder if you meant Greece or if you just meant, you know, that your odds are higher going with the other 15 nations. Could be both ways. But yeah, serving for the match, Alejandro Davidovich Fukina to become the first winner of the 2024 um, ATP Tour season. And, you know, the first point couldn't be more routine. Big first serve, plays the uh, plus one forehand in a really smart direction as well. This has been very professional as well from Davidovich Fukina. No, I don't want to... Well, it is. I guess it is 4.30 a.m. Nah, I'm still not going to swear. But basically, yeah, he's just not sort of toying around. He He's there. Yeah, just reading a tweet from someone as well about... Um, Sebovid's first serve placement, which um, I think when he lands them, I, I'm not sure if I agree that, that that when he lands them, the placement is subpar, but certainly he's not an amazing spot server, no. And um, some, some of the games where he's had issues with the percentages are also related to that. But yeah, Davide Trukina just two points away now. That's a great plus one forehand as well. Upping the spin. Great placement into the corner. Two match points. And what can you say? I mean, it was really as good as it gets, the whole match from, from Davide Trukina. Yeah, even considering that Sabovit didn't have a like he had a shocker in the second set, let's be honest. But you can only do I mean you, you can only face what you know the opponent gives you and you can you can only play against the opponent that you have on the day and against the opponent that you have on the day that he has on the day. Uh Davidovich Fukina has done everything right pretty much. And um Actually, that's a that's a sort of return slam from Sabovilt. He placed two of his... What? No, he he landed that. Okay, he placed two of his best points in the of the of the whole match, really, and that's that's the sort of you know freely freedom that uh, being on the brink of defeat has given him. 
uh, the slap forehand return and then this whole combination here, which almost actually ended in a very poor unforced error you know, on the drive volley, but well, he wins it eventually. So it's actually back to deuce. I don't think Sabovilt has even had a breakpoint so far, uh, although they had, there have been multiple deuces on the Davidovich Fokina serve, around six, I would guess. But, you know, again, it's not a breakpoint, it's a match point. No first serve on the third match point. Going to be a second is Sabovilt aiming at it already with that big forehand. No, actually he goes for a backhand return this time and it's a backhand return winner down the line. Again, when Davidovich Fukina has a match point, Sabovilt is just playing really freely, right? <laughs> Will it be another crazy point? No, not this time. It's uh, the contact point on the Sabovilt backhand wasn't great there. He actually could have made one more step forward and perhaps it would have been right. But yeah, of course, it doesn't really matter. It's fourth match point at 6-4, six, 6-love. Six so yeah, a bit of a weird match because for like 45 minutes, we were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It was a huge battle. And then he goes away completely. So... Yeah, that's fine. Tiago Sabe of Mild. I like that. I actually haven't heard that. That's uh, that's the first time I'm seeing this pun, which I'm surprised by, because now that you've said it, it seems really obvious, but kudos to you. Um, he almost went long on that net slam. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, very professional from Davidovich Fokina. Routine on the back and down the line getting so much work done with the first serve, um, really shrinking the court as well for Sabovilt, who wasn't perfect on choosing when to venture forward. Uh, but yeah, the second set from the Brazilian, let's let's forget about that. I still think he isn't as bad on hard courts as this result suggests. I think he showed it in a way. But uh, well, for now, of course, we are expecting bigger things for, from him on clay, needless to say. The golden swing will be a pretty big part of his season too, I'm assuming. Last year, he sort of, you know, wasn't still in that huge peak yet. So it's been a while since he was successful there, I guess, 2020. <laughs> DK squared, yeah. Uh, DK squared says goodbye. And um, yeah, tune into whatever else we're going to have. Uh, hopefully we're going to get to that 5,000 subscribers. Now it's going to be Seribes Tormo Hadat Maya, a tie, that, um, a match that could decide a tie already. If it's going to be um, a win for Seribes Tormo, but of course Hadat Maya is the favorite. Lots to be excited for there. I'm actually going to just go to bed though. Um, gotta got to catch some sleep before playing tennis tomorrow, but I will uh, watch some of Australia great britain in the morning for sure um so yeah um ghosty says no worries so i'm not worried and uh again thank you and see ya if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis
Um, hi, Novak. Um, I don't know if you saw what Vasek said uh, last night about uh, organising and, and, and tennis could and should be even bigger than it already is if only the people organising it were doing their job properly. He highlighted the balls, he highlighted playing late at night and then early in the morning and injuries. I just wondered whether you heard that but also if you'd like to add something. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, I actually saw Vasek just... <laughs> before I came here to, to, to see you guys, but I haven't, I haven't seen his statement on that. But there's been a lot of discussions on, um, on the effect of the different balls in every, basically every week uh, on the, the joints and the wrist and the shoulders and the elbows. And, uh, you know, I think someone told me that in terms of injuries, um, this year comparing to other years is, you know, drastically has gone up. So um, yeah, in terms of the balls, I absolutely agree. There should be there should be some discussion on that. I actually spoke about uh, that with uh, Andrea Gaudenzi, the ATP president, and Massimo, who is the CEO, uh, in Paris during the Paris Bercy week. And you know, I, I shared my opinion and my views. And then you know, obviously, they are thinking about various different options and ways of how to regulate that and how to make it. Uh, uh, better for the players and prevent prevent injuries. Uh, in terms of the scheduling, I think you know there has been a lot of criticism and a lot of um, yeah, basically um, uh, um, player players complaining about it. So I think that should be addressed in a proper way. Obviously, Davis Cup and ITF is regulated differently from ATP Tour. And from Grand Slams, you have different governing bodies, different schedules, different broadcasting demands in the end of the day we know that the TV is the one deciding fortunately or unfortunately but you know there, there has to be more I guess thorough discussions on that as well. If there's one match from Rafa's story where you think that was a missed opportunity. That was a big chance. They have uh, inches. Two. Or three uh, in Australian Open. The, no more. We lose the opportunity in Wimbledon against Djokovic. In 20, 2018, 2018. Then we lose the opportunity more important because that was semi-final. We lose the opportunity in uh, Australian Open. In the Australian Open, uh, 2014, mm -hmm. 2012, and 2017. Yeah. In 14, because he was he has an injury against Babrinka uh, that uh, before he has had to never lose against him. Then uh, with uh, Djokovic and uh, Joko and uh, Federer, he had break up in the fifth yeah and uh 40 30 or 30 50 i, yeah. I don't remember well it was a ball very close goes up. but this is what happened there was in uh, in roland garros 2009 of course he ha he i am sure that he won the he will uh, win the, uh, he won this tournament when he has no problems in his in his knee mm. because at this moment he was the the best. Uh, he he won uh, Australian Open, then he won uh, the, the the tournaments on clay, and he arrived uh, with problems in Roland Garros. And for this reason, in my opinion, he lose. But there are. Uh, other time that maybe he has to lose and he won.
Um, hi, Novak. Um, I don't know if you saw what Vasek said uh, last night about uh, organising and, and, and tennis could and should be even bigger than it already is if only the people organising it were doing their job properly. He highlighted the balls, he highlighted playing late at night and then early in the morning and injuries. I just wondered whether you heard that but also if you'd like to add something. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, I actually saw Vasek just... <laughs> before I came here to, to, to see you guys, but I haven't, I haven't seen his statement on that. But there's been a lot of discussions on, um, on the effect of the different balls in every, basically every week uh, on the, the joints and the wrist and the shoulders and the elbows. And, uh, you know, I think someone told me that in terms of injuries, um, this year comparing to other years is, you know, drastically has gone up. So um, yeah, in terms of the balls, I absolutely agree. There should be there should be some discussion on that. I actually spoke about uh, that with uh, Andrea Galdensi, the ATP president, and Massimo, who is the CEO, uh, in Paris during Paris Bercy week. And you know, I, I shared my opinion and my views. And then you know, obviously, they are thinking about various different options and ways of how to regulate that and how to make it. Uh, uh, better for the players and prevent prevent injuries. Uh, in terms of the scheduling, I think you know there has been a lot of criticism and a lot of um, yeah, basically um, uh, um, player players complaining about it. So I think that should be addressed in a proper way. Obviously, Davis Cup and ITF is regulated differently from ATP Tour. <laughs> from Grand Slams, you have different governing bodies, different schedules, different broadcasting demands. In the end of the day, we know that the TV is the one deciding, fortunately or unfortunately, but you know, there, there has to be more, I guess, thorough discussions on that as well. Ready? Play. Emma Vaducanu has given an interview with the BBC where she's outlined her plans to return from injury, when that will be. She's also explained what she's been up to whilst away and she's been watching much tennis. Uh, she's also got an answer for the critics of which, um, you know, some are on social media, but also, of course, many within the media. And she's also explained which is the slam that she would most like to win. What is her ultimate dream in tennis? So, as I say, the interview was given to BBC London earlier on today, where she outlined her plans to return to next for next season and also how she would one day love to win Wimbledon. So, she will make her return to tennis next season after struggling with injuries since, mainly since May. Uh, she obviously had injuries since then, but she hasn't played since May. She withdrew from the Madrid Open, uh, I think on the eve of the tournament, um, to basically uh, have some operations. Um, she's missed three of the four Grand Slams. She did play in Australia where she lost to Coco Goff. And, uh, of course, just a couple of days ago, she dropped out of the world's top 200 and did confirm in this interview with BBC uh, London that she will not be returning to the tour until next year. Um, Britain didn't make the Billie Jean King Cup uh, finals, which will take place in Seville in the south of Spain uh, in November. Also, she has no hope of making the WTO finals also in November. So she confirmed that next season will be her return to tennis. 20 year old also said that the slams will obviously finish now but it has been difficult to watch them go by. Um, she was just said I want to stay in my lane as much as possible and keep focused on my recovery were her exact words. The 20 year old has been hampered though by injuries since winning 
that US Open title in 2021 when remarkably she managed to qualify and go all the way to the title without dropping a set in New York. She also made British number one at one point as a result, um, but has not gone beyond the second round of any Grand Slam since that mesmeric, incredible run uh, two years ago when she became the first British woman in 44 years to win a major singles title since Virginia Wade. She was also asked about how she deals with criticism, and Raducanu had this to say. The fact they are still talking about me, even though I'm not at these events, is just a compliment. Someone told me once, for example, worry when they're not talking about you, she added. Raducanu has, of course, returned to the practice court. We did see some glimpses of her playing some short tennis in August, for example. Uh, the first time since she went under underwent surgery earlier on this year. And in fact, she only did play 10 matches in the first five months of the year. She said she does hope to return to better form and fulfil her Wimbledon dreams. Wimbledon is the dream, she said, and always has been growing up. Of course, she's from the UK, so it makes sense. She said, it's the ultimate dream to win Wimbledon. Back in May, she seemed to undergo three successful surgeries. Um, she said that she underwent the surgeries on both of her wrists and her ankle in a letter posted on social media. In fact, she said at the time, it's safe to say the last 10 months, so that would have been the summer of 2022 until these surgeries in May of this year have been difficult as I dealt with a recurring injury on both on a bone of both hands she said at the time she said she tried to manage the pain and play through it for most of the year but in the end it was just getting too much uh, she was missing so much of training as well as certain tournaments anyway that for her it made sense sense to go ahead with these procedures well now she has confirmed that she will be back uh, I would imagine, therefore, for the Australian swing, maybe United Cup, end of December, beginning of January, perhaps, for the 250 in New Zealand uh, or elsewhere. And then, of course, the Australian Open. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Ready? Play. Cool. Hi, uh, we are here again in Monastia. It's my first time here, but of course it's the second time that we've had the tournament here. And I'm with the president of the Tunisian Tennis Federation. Um, firstly, can you just introduce yourself? I'm Salma, I'm a doctor in sports psychology. I teach in the High University of Sports and uh, I am the president of Tunisian Tennis Federation. I'm also a member in the board of ITF. I represent Africa. Nice. Um, tell me, uh, how has it been this year, for example, compared to last year? Last year was the first version, so now you're an expert at hosting a tennis tournament. Uh, let's say not uh, uh, really an expert, but uh, this edition we have uh, more good players compared to last year because last year the best players was 80 and in this year we have 26, 32 mm -hmm. and uh, it's very, very important the level of uh, the player, the technical level uh, of the player. Secondly, we tried to improve a little uh, the infrastructure, that's why we did a little village. And uh, we get, uh, let's say, not more sponsor, but uh, the same sponsor. As you know, tennis is not uh, a sport popular here in Tunisia. To get sponsor, it's not easy for us. And uh, the majority, they want to support uh, because they have the, the visibility. And such an event, because it's a WTA 250, and it's diffused in Bein and uh, all the media. That's why we get more sponsor than last year. Good. Um, we are missing one player this year compared to last year. Ons, unfortunately, she got injured last week in China and wasn't able to make it. How much of an impact does that have on the tournament? To be honest, uh, the fact that Ons uh, doesn't play uh, 
we don't have a lot of spectators and uh, we try to push people to come to see uh, tennis. As you know, uh, Ons, uh, she's our ambassador. Uh, everyone loves her all over the world, especially here in Tunisia. They want to, all people, all players, uh, all the fans of Ons, they want to see her playing here uh, in Monastir or in, in Tunisia. Unfortunately, uh, she has injury. And uh, we did our tournament. Everything is okay. The level uh, is very high. Uh, every day I'm watching the matches. Really, I'm very happy because uh, there is uh, good players, uh, good young players, and uh, because they love uh, Tunisia and they love Monastir also. Yes. Um, you have a three-year situation, last year, this year, and, of course, next year. Is there a hope? Is there a plan to maybe continue beyond 2024? The hope is here, yes, we can plan, but I have to discuss with EMG and WTA because, as you know, I buy the three edition, uh, the tournament. Uh, why not? Why not? It's our dream uh, that uh, we maintain Jasmine Open for many years, and why not uh, also... Uh, as a president of federation with my board, we hope to host also uh, an ATP. I can tell you that to, to work here is a pleasure because obviously having everything uh, together and it's nice. I'm from Europe, so we, we like some winter sun uh, and the palm trees and, and the beach. What about the players? Are you communicating with the players about, um, you know, are they, are they comfortable? Are they enjoying their experience here? Yes, yes. All the players are very happy to be here. Uh, the majority of the players that come here last year, they, they are here. They did a big publicity of uh, promotion of uh, Jasmine Open uh, uh, tournament. They like the weather, they have the beach, the food, and I think everything uh, is good. The hospitality here in the hotel. The Tunisians are known to be very kind uh, with the other people, and especially tennis. Because uh, now everyone loves tennis in Tunis, uh, in the fact of the result of, uh, of Ons. Mm. And uh, I don't know, I think that they are uh, very happy, all the players. Okay, one more. Um, next year, are you already sort of planning? I mean, are you looking at what happened last year, this year, and also thinking about, okay, what can we do next year to maybe you know, get even more players or make it even better for everybody. Have you already thought about next year? Yes, we are thinking about uh, next year. First of all, the week. It's very important mm -hmm. to get the best week because, uh, as you know, this time just before uh, the Masters, mm -hmm. it's good. We get a good players, but it's not really the week that we want to take as a federation. Perhaps the first, uh, the first uh, week of October, it, okay. will, it, it, will, be, it will be better. And of course, we want to improve the village to get more sponsor. That's why we have to work on sponsoring next month. We don't have to wait till uh, uh, August or July. It will be very late. And uh, well, yes, why not invite uh, players in top 10 if Ons will not play or if Ons uh, is not here? As you know, in sport, there is always injury and we cannot control our player. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Merci. Merci. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Ready? Play.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Hey, thanks for taking the time to, well, you haven't got any choice, actually. I'm just talking at you, if you like. But I'm here also to present to you why I think it's not a bad idea and not that expensive as well if you become a member. And this is how you can do it, and this is what you can gain. So if we look here at the Talking Tennis sort of home page, if you like, on YouTube, uh, we can see this little button here which says join. It is also pinned in the live chat as well. And you can also, I think, see it just below most of our videos, certainly the live ones and so on. Now, why is it a good idea to join and become a member? Well, in the live chat, you can add little funny things, you can add emojis and all sorts of things. But possibly, more importantly, you can get to access some live videos, such as this one here, uh, where we look back on the last sort of few moments from the Billie Jean King Cup. So there are little bonuses such as this one, but there are many, many more. And in fact, if we have a quick look at all of the members only stuff, stuff, I repeat, you will see very, very quickly, um, some of the top, top stuff that we've had for members only over the last 12 months uh, since the channel began. Remember, these videos 
are for members only. You can become a member from as little as about $2 a month, two euros a month, uh, two pounds a month, something like that. There are various different things. Oh, and by the way, you'll also be supporting the channel. So it's a win, 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 win scenario. Uh, let me just show you some of the members only stuff. For example, uh, we've got an exclusive uh, little clip there talking to Laura Siegmund, uh, Laura Tsurenko, her encore interview, some doubles footage there from Monastir, the Germany press conference pre-tournament Billie Jean King Cup, Claire Burrell talking as well to the media in her press conference in Monastir, Storm Hunter and Alicia Parks interview, um, uh, Rebecca Masarova, her press conference, Coco Goff, exclusive for members only, albeit it was in Madrid. But these are just some of the things, some of the interviews and et cetera, like Lestien here, a chat with him, Emma Navarro, and so on and so forth. So many little bonus videos available for just two euros a month. So what are you waiting for? Become a member. Or don't. It's okay. Ready. Play. Whoa.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Yeah, right now? Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, great. You got it all inside of um, Yeah, should work fine. Um, can I have 10 seconds or 20 seconds? Okay. I didn't know, sorry. All right. That's fine. He just wants that. Yeah, sure. Is it okay to stand here or you want you'd rather sit down there? Uh where do you want me? Standing here, here? Okay. okay. Yeah. I don't wanna, you know, make you stand up for too long. Okay, let me just check the cameras on. Yes it is. Probably a little bit bamboozled uh, with uh, with everything. <laughs> Sorry. And Billie Jean King Cup 2023. That's a wrap.
ready. Play. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Ready? Play. Hi Botic, uh, first of all, um, how was the training session today? Yeah, I think we had a, we had a, we had a good practice session. First we played some doubles and uh, yeah, we ended with some single points. So uh, it was a long one, but, uh, but I think we played some good level. So uh, I think everybody's happy in the team and I think we're ready for Italy. And you seem like you're having fun as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the team is having a lot of fun. We know each other quite well. Uh, we play already quite some time with each other. So. Uh, yeah, and off and off court we go, we hang out a lot, so it's nice. Yeah, it's a it's a good good atmosphere, I think. Good. Um, you mentioned in your press conference earlier about some of the difficulties you had this year. Obviously, an injury following that loss to Runa, um, but you said also that that was quite a mental challenge as well, getting over that loss, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I was. I think I was 29, 29 after Munich or top 30. I, I don't know the ranking by number, but uh, yeah, then up. Playing with an injury for a while, uh, having to stop, uh, picking up another one, losing losing some points, and uh, yeah, going to 60, 70. It's it's 
Yeah, it's difficult. I think it's also part of tennis, but I never, never had it before. So I think the first time is always tough when you go down in the rankings. Was, uh, was the Runa sort of injury in that final as well, was that distracting for you or did that not bother you at all? Uh, no, 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 not during the final. No, no, definitely not. Um, so yeah, uh, from Madrid on uh, to Rome, Roland Garros, then I stopped for, for two weeks. Had to miss a Dutch grass tournament and then I started playing again with some difficulties and then mm -hmm. uh, afterwards I twisted my ankle so I was out again for a couple of weeks so um, yeah I came back during US Open and then you're yeah have to find the rhythm the movement um, of course everything in the beginning is tough when you didn't play for a while so yeah I think I think at the end of the year I I picked up some good wins and I played played a little bit better tennis um, so yeah that's also giving a confidence boost I'm going to just ask you a question. I uh, just want to show you some pictures. And I just want you to tell me what you think. Okay, here's the first one. You can probably see it. What's your first, what's your first thoughts when you see this picture? I think we played a terrible doubles in Rotterdam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we played Gilet. No, I'm not sure, actually. Who did we play here? Gilet Vlieger, I think. Mm. That's correct, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't win, so uh, no, but we had fun. I think we always have fun when we play together um, with the doubles, so yeah. Are you expecting to play both doubles and singles this week? Uh, not sure. Uh, there are some options, so we have a lot of options in doubles, so we'll see yeah. who's better. Next picture is this one, which is from US Open 2021. What are your, are your overall thoughts positive, or do you still think that, you, did you dream bigger even then? No, I think overall, uh, I think this was against Schwarzman. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, first quarter final. Um, yeah, when, you, when you're going to start in qualies, when somebody says you're going to be in the quarterfinals, I think you sign for it. So, um, no, really positive, positive feeling about this one. And I think Medvedev was just too good in the, in the quarters. I think the whole tournament, he was just too good. Yeah. Uh, next picture is... This one. I'm not eating cheese. You're not eating cheese? No, no, not like on bread and stuff or... No, I'm, I don't eat cheese a lot, let's say. You know you have something with Rafa Nadal, he doesn't eat cheese either. No? Yeah. No, that's a good thing, huh, maybe. No, it's... Uh, no, I, I don't eat it like other Dutch people, like they always had it for breakfast and everything, but yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm not eating this one. Uh, this picture? You and him shaking hands at the left. Uh, what, what does this make you think of? Yeah, first time I played him. Uh, I think in the, little, in the beginning I was a little bit overwhelmed, like he walking on court and yeah, then they say all his best results. He won it like a couple of times, so. Uh, <laughs> at, least, at least it wasn't Philip Chatre, I guess. I don't uh, know if that made any difference. No, that's true. Um, we played on Suzanne Lange? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, but I think it was great first match against him there. First two sets didn't play quite well, but uh, yeah, of course. Uh, the next last picture I have for you is... Yeah, I think Djokovic at the moment is... Yeah. Kind is of, it impossible? Yeah, I think it's tough to argue with somebody who's winning so many titles. But yeah, then you have Varger. He is like did so much for the sport I think and he's like I think they're all different in a way so I think it's tough to say somebody is the GOAT but on results wise uh, yeah you have to go with Djokovic of course um, but yeah maybe classy wise maybe you go Federer and I think Rafa is what he's doing like like Shields was asking a nice question actually he said if two of the grand slams would have been on clay and not on hard for example uh, how many would Rafa have won? Um, yeah, I think they're all great, amazing players. Maybe the best, best three players at the same time we're gonna we're gonna see for a long time. Thank you, Botic. Thank you. No Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
Um, hi, no, Mike. Um, I don't know if you saw what Vasek said uh, last night about uh, organizing and, and, and tennis could and should be even bigger than it already is if only the people organizing it were doing their job properly. He highlighted the balls, he highlighted playing late at night and then early in the morning and injuries. I just wondered whether you heard that, but also if you'd like to add something. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, I actually saw Vashik just <laughs> before I came here to, to, to see you guys, but I haven't, I haven't seen his statement on that. But there's been a lot of discussions on, um, on the effect of the different balls in every, basically every week uh, on the, the joints and the wrist and the shoulders and the elbows. And, uh, you know, I think someone told me that in terms of injuries, um, this year comparing to other years is, you know, drastically has gone up. So, um, yeah, in terms of the balls, I absolutely agree. There should be, there should be some discussion on that. I actually spoke about uh, that with uh, Andrea Gaudenzi, the ATP president, and Massimo, who is the CEO uh, in Paris during Paris Bercy week. And you know, I, I shared my opinion and my views, and then you know, obviously they are thinking about various different options and ways of how to regulate that and how to make it uh, better for the players and prevent prevent injuries. Uh, in terms of the scheduling, I think you know there has been a lot of criticism and a lot of um, yeah, basically um, uh, um, player players complaining about it. So. I think that should be addressed in a proper way. Obviously, Days Cup and ITF is regulated differently from ATP Tour and from Grand Slams. You have different governing bodies, different schedules, different broadcasting demands. In the end of the day, we know that the TV is the one deciding, fortunately or unfortunately, but you know there, there has to be more, I guess, thorough discussions on that as well.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.